imagine the same thing having A players like across the board in every single department doing their best to win every single time. Everybody has a voice, everybody has a, an idea and we listen to the community and I think the community listens to us. And like we want to make this the kind of place that every entrepreneur looks at and says, heck, why would I want to do something outside when I can be an entrepreneur in this business? We'll always hire you, Nick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquette. Today, we got some heavy hitters from the Carbon Six crew on the call. We got Vanessa, Nassim, and Clayton. Uh, it's good to have a few of you here on the call, guys, and really just start to get an idea of what it really is like, you know, inside of Carbon Six and working together. You guys have so many just great people on your team. Um, so I'm curious to learn more about, you know, how you guys feel about working there, uh, and, and give you guys an opportunity to share some of your expertise as well. Um, so I'm just going to kick it. I'm gonna go ahead and kick it to Nassim. Um, you know, why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about, uh, how you feel about working with people at Carbon Six. So we're, you know, I think I mentioned this to you the other day on the podcast, um, we have the, the privilege of auditing a fair amount, looking at a fair amount of Amazon GMV across both 1P and 3P. And so we're seeing a fair amount of trends, right? Like so we're getting to see which sellers are performing better than others, which categories are performing better than others, uh, what size of seller is the most impacted, right? Like, and I think the things that are known uh, are it's getting harder to sell on Amazon. So your smaller sellers are pretty hard hit. It's also not been you know the easiest time for the aggregators. Like uh, if I look at the, the groups that have declined in sales the most over the, the past 12 months, on average, the aggregator category has been the hardest hit. So we'll look at things like that. Uh, and we'll also look at, you know, what some of the smartest sellers are doing to see around the curve, right? Like, um, although there are groups that have been hit hard, um, there are others, particularly memory, many members of the MBS community who've grown over the past year, right? Um, and grown amidst some terribly hard market conditions, rising interest rates, et cetera. And those those sellers are doing a series of things and we have a list of like you know, eight, nine of those things. Um, and so we'll, we'll kind of walk through a series of case studies about what we're seeing from the smartest people that we work with. Yeah, that's going to be real exciting, man. I, I, do you know the guys at Northbound? Do any of you guys know the Northbound guys? Scott Dietz, Jack, uh, and Bill Sterry. Man, we, we hired them and we had our kickoff call today. And those guys look at Amazon just like way differently than I do. I mean, he was like comparing it to like, you know, having a piece of property and like rental income. And like, do you just want this to be like a passive investment where you're just collecting a few thousand dollars and you've got like four inventory turns a year at $30,000. And um, it was just such a good perspective because like, that's how I would look at another business opportunity. But I think for some of us, when you're like a founder and you've built something from the ground up, it's hard to look at it through that lens. And, and that's what hit me today when I was on that call. And like, as I hear you talk about that in a seam, it's like, you know, just having a different perspective on, on your business, um, especially with how things are changing and just how much more difficult, uh, it is in, in Amazon. So I, I'm excited to, to hear about that. Um, I think it's going to be really valuable information, man. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, you know, uh, Clayton, Vanessa, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kick it your guys' way a little bit. I, I really, you know, I want to hear about like your area of expertise because I know you guys have a lot of value to add, but I'm also really curious about the dynamic of working at Carbon Six. I know, uh, you know, they, they've, they've, kept on founders that they buy. And I, I think that's how some of you guys have gotten involved in carbon six, but I, I want to know more about like how, how is it really like behind the scenes at the, at the meetings and like, how are you guys working together and what is that, you know, feel like for you guys? Um, I can start with that. I guess the, the first thing that I'll say is that carbon six has been my first experience in a bigger organization. So I don't have anything to compare it to. Uh, I've been a founder uh, alone, like a solopreneur for my entire life until I came to Carbon Six. And one of the things that I noticed, especially talking to, you know, friends that are in 
in bigger companies too, is one thing that differentiates differentiates all like really uh, big time. It's the winning culture. Like that's something that to me as a solopreneur, as the A player in my team, right? As a founder, you guide your company. Uh, when you come to Carbon 6 or when I came to Carbon 6, it was just like, imagine the same thing, having A players like across the board in every single department, doing their best to win every single time. So for me, it's been a very inspiring journey because you know, that also raises all of the standards. Like you, you, you can always do better. You can always win more. And I don't know, feel that I'm in an organization where a bunch of people are way smarter than me. That's something sometimes when you're in your own business, you don't have that, right? right? Like you're the founder and you know everything and people go to you to ask questions here in, in this organization, it's just like, not even you don't even need to be the founder the ceo you don't need to be in the in executive board to be just an amazing contributor to every single team and that is just amazing it's inspiring it's also very um you know intimidating at, at in some point i'll say that a lot of like uh in sport in imposter syndrome comes in of like oh wow how how was i able to land here uh but it's been amazing so a lot of the a lot of the winning culture and also it's a very supportive space. And that's one thing that I really like. One of our values is uh, that we get better every single day. You're, you're better than yesterday. That's one of the things that we say. And that's allow us to, you know, fail, fail fast. And we're here to support you. Like that is just impressive to me. And I don't know if a lot of big companies have that. Um, here in Carbon 6, that's a reality. So I'm super proud and I'm super, you know, it's excited every time I, you know, get into the work and go to the office. It's just because I will, I know that I'm going to be sharing the space with people like that. Yeah, that is exciting. But as I can definitely, uh, you know, it, it's, it's no fun when the company culture isn't good and, and it can really kill the motivation of like someone like yourself or, you know, any of you sitting on this call, um, if you don't feel like, you're not surrounded by similar people. Um, so that's awesome, you know, that you're able to get in there and have that as like your first experience because I think that's where a lot of companies, they either they either don't realize how important it is or they do, but it's really hard to like figure out and, and to get there. Um, Clayton, what about you, man? What is it like for you at Carbon6? What are your thoughts on, on the team there? Um, Let's hear it. Yeah, um, I would agree with almost everything Vanessa said. You know, I've been an entrepreneur since 2014, full time since 2016. And in all reality, not a lot changed whenever I came on to Carbon 6. Like I was hustling a lot before and I hustle a lot now. And I think that the feeling at Carbon 6, at least for me, and I think it is rampant throughout the company, is that the people that we're trying to service are working around the clock, right? We're helping a lot of solopreneurs, small companies, and if they are willing to grind, you know, 80, 90 hours a week, and we want their business, then why wouldn't we like show them that we have the exact same work ethic and we work just as hard to build the platforms, the softwares, the team that they should partner with? Um, and I come from a unique background because, um, you know, I am an Amazon seller. I have been since 2018. I did arbitrage before that. So some people came into Carbon 6 and were like, my God, this is like so fast. People move so quickly. And I was like, that's every single person that is one of our clients. Like, they all do this. So yep. like, we're, we're not just like inside of Carbon 6 surrounded by this like huge desire to win, but also by all of our clients. Like a lot of times, um, I think even our sales team, right? Like they get on a call with a client and they're, they're motivated by like, the ambition of the people that they're talking to, right? They're like, oh, I have this one service uh, that I think we could provide you and, and help you with. And then the customer is like, what if you did this and that? And they're like, like the energy is just like, if you're surrounding yourself with the right people and you're in the right places, then everybody has a voice. Everybody has a, an idea and we listen to the community. And I think the community listens to us and it only works if that works both ways. But the, the energy at Carbon6 is, very similar to what Vanessa said 
um, everybody has this very competitive nature. Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to be the person that helped move the dial for carbon six, but that really means moving the dial for the customer, right? You're not, you're not winning in this space unless you're helping your client win. And that has either like ingrained itself inside of the employees at carbon six or the people that it didn't, they're just not carbon six. And I mean, it's just like, we got to be the best. We have to do what the customer needs or we're not going to be here because the client's going to pick some other software or service that will pro provide a better service. Simple as that. It is, yeah. it's, it's fun. It's work. Don't get me wrong, but it is fun. And if you're in the entrepreneurial spirit and mode, like I know Vanessa and myself and the CMAR, like you wake up every day and you feel like you have an awesome purpose and you're doing something special. That's how it feels. Man, that's well said. I, I think two things really stick out to me, man, is like, like, yeah, you guys are working for a bunch of, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, that, that need help with their business and you're supporting them. And like, like, yeah, if I shoot you on a, me a message on Saturday, it's like, that's not my day off, you know? Right. Like, like if I'm, if I'm working and I'm paying you like a, you know, a managed service or something, and I discover a problem on a Saturday, like, I don't want to wait till Monday to hear about that. Um, and, and yeah, if you can give that answer in, on the entrepreneur's time, then you immediately stand out, you know, you immediately stand out as different and unique. Yeah. And I would say, I would say like, I don't, I'm not in sales. I don't work on commission and I've taken calls during the work hours of Australia time, Israel time, uh, China, Hong Kong, you, you name it. Like I've taken calls at that time. And that's not like, if I were to say that in a, a room of carbon six employees, they'd be like, cool, man. Yeah. So everybody else. Yeah. It's, it was like, it's because, you know, we want, the customer, like we, we want to serve, like we want to win and we want to make sure they're getting the best service possible. So yeah, it's just a, it's a deep desire to like be the best is, is the culture. It reminds me of like, uh, I think everyone can relate to this, but we all have our really good friends, you know, that you grow up with. Right. And, and at least for me, like we were always giving each other crap, you know, like friendly competition. Right. But it like motivated us, not in a way of like, I'm going to, you know, put you down because I beat you, but like, you know, it's like a friendly competition type thing, man. And, and that's, that's good energy. You know, if you can get that and bring that into the work, man, then you can overcome a lot of other issues <laughs> in the business. 100%, right. That's good stuff, man. Um, a lot of it was by design, right? Cause like, yeah, every single, like each of us that was starting the business had started business before and you know, most of the members of our executive leadership team started this before. And like when I, when we think about the leaders in the business, people like Clayton and Vanessa and others, and these, these are entrepreneurs who decided that you know, coming together with other entrepreneurs meant that we could build something bigger than any of us could build. Alone. And that's kind of just been our ethos. Right. And I think when you're serving entrepreneurs, you have to, you have to be hungry. Like I, I look at like what exactly what Clayton said, you, you have to you have to maintain a level of hunger and show your customer that you're even hungrier than he is or she is. And I think the only people that really the people that epitomize that are entrepreneurs. And so um, I like to think about like what Larry Ellison built at Oracle is his entire mindset was around finding entrepreneurs to build his business. So literally, like whatever needed to happen, like whether it was aqua hiring in a business, making a big acquisition finding somebody that was going to start a business and figuring out an upside plan that made it such that, that person was going to stay in the business and build something like making it super competitive to your point, Nick, um, and also offering those challenges, right? So combination of like the, the competition opportunity, the competition opportunity, and then the opportunity to just build something amazing, I think was what like that company was able to foster. And like when we think about carbon six, like we want to make this the kind of place that every entrepreneur looks at and says, heck, why would I want to do something outside when I can be an entrepreneur in this business and have way more fun? Because like, you know, as you, as you know, as each of us know on this call, like entrepreneurship is a pretty lonely thing, right? Like it's a, it's a pretty hard challenge. And like, if you can be less lonely and be challenged, pushed by other people who are just smart and angry, it makes sure a pretty cool thing. Yeah. It's such a uh, unique you know, culture group, man, entrepreneurs. Like I always think 
as me. I've got kids and a wife and, you know, I, I was always very like open with my wife when we first met, but it's like, you know, I get obsessed about these things, right? Like I'm going to be obsessed about my business and I'm going to make choices that may seem like I'm choosing work over this. And, you know, it might be because I am in this moment, you know, because I'm a little obsessed with what I'm working on. Uh, but Hey, just trust me, you know, like I've got a vision, I've got a plan, I'm working on it and, and you guys are included in it. <laughs> like just because I'm isolating myself, um, and, and doing these things, like I'm, you know, it's, it's coming from a place of love and there's not a lot of people you can like have those conversations with. Um, so I imagine you guys get a lot of value just, you know, from that perspective as well. Cause, cause for an entrepreneur, work life balance. I mean, I feel like I kind of get it now, but man, it took me a while. I didn't really believe in it for a while. I was like, this is my life. Like, it's just life for me, you know, but now that I have kids and stuff, like, of course I have to have those times where I'm not checking slack. I don't care that the VAs came on at 7 PM. I need to have dinner with my family type of thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just so great, man. I mean, I definitely envy, envy what you guys have over there. Um, and I always have ever since I first, you know, connected with Justin and, and found out about what you guys were doing. And it's like, just you said, Nassim, it's, it's lonely. Um, so it's great that you guys have all those people to lean on. Well, always hiring, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I might, you guys might, you've piqued my interest. That's for sure. <laughs> I like the idea of having all that support, man. Um, and, and, uh, you know, just surrounding yourself by great people. That's why I love MDS. Uh, that's why I fell in love with that community. Uh, you get to meet people that, that think like you have a vision, like you get obsessed like you. Um, and there's just so many like, like-minded and driven people in there, uh, that makes it so special. And, and I meet, and I immediately con connected those dots. Like after I figured out what Justin, um, you know, was trying to do with carbon six and what you guys were doing. Like I saw the connection between like carbon six and MDS and that great culture of, of, uh, people that you guys bring to the table. Uh, so it's really cool to know that you guys are so involved with MDS. You know, I'm going to see you guys at the inspire event. Um, and we're going to continue to be able to nurture those relationships because as you get older, like you, that's really what becomes important, at least to me, because I also start to think about what type of people are my children going to be around, right? And and what are their children going to be like, right? Because as you get older, like where I am now, at least with kids, you know, you, you get into a position where you're sending them off to school. And I don't know how school was for you guys, but it didn't, it wasn't the great that great for me, you know? So for me to send my children there, on a regular basis, it's kind of like, it's like, all right, I, I've got to do something different here. You know, I want my children to be exposed to different people, uh, because I didn't really have that when, when I was younger. Uh, so it becomes super important, you know, that community of people that, that you're around and, uh, you start enjoying life with. Um, so guys, thanks for sharing a little bit about what it's like at carbon six. Um, I do want I do want you guys to touch on kind of your area of expertise, uh, maybe drop a couple hints at what's coming up um, at your talk at Inspire. Vanessa, I know you got something coming. Nassim, you're going to be doing the market insights. Um, and then Clayton, I know you're going to be at Inspire, um, but I don't know if you're doing, I don't think you're doing a call, but I know you've got um, a lot of knowledge with like external marketing driving external traffic to Amazon. And I think you touched on some new automation that's happening over at pixel me. Uh, so why don't you let us know about, uh, you know, your area of expertise and then, uh, get into the new, uh, automation at pixel me. Yeah, uh, of course. So, um, general manager of pixel me now changed titles a couple of times, but that's just where it like naturally flowed. I think getting back to the idea, of, um, the culture of carbon six is that if you step up and you're like, Hey, I'm really passionate about this. There's not a lot of friction. It's like, you think that's where you should be? Like, go there, do that, own that. Um, Vanessa's done similar things and the seems done similar things. And, um, that, that's where I've ended up at carbon six is really spearheading 
pixel me and um you kind of already teased it out but exactly like if you'd have asked me like nine months ago i would have probably told you pixel me will be like a mature product in like three months and then like if you'd asked me six months ago i would have said three months and then three months ago i would have said three months but despite that um, what i am going to say is that pixel me is less than three months from being a completely mature product and a big part of that has been around automations. Um, so we are starting to partner with agencies that can bring on their own their own clients, but really have huge control over what the software does for each customer based on each client's individual goals. Um, you can now create automations about when you know Google traffic. We're speak, speaking specifically about Google to Amazon about you know when do you pause a, a keyword, like at what a cost. Well, you can choose that. Um, you can choose when campaigns switch from optimizing for clicks to optimizing for conversion and at you know what rate you walk down the cost per action to try to increase performance. There's like, without getting into like tons of details, we finally have it to where automations are running instead of like large teams that we used to have manually pulling a lot of letters. And um, we got a couple of trip, like tricks still up our sleeve. But like, by a couple, I mean a couple. We got a couple left and uh, I'm running out of ideas. So the software is really an immature place. And um, I think um, external traffic has become one of my passions in the past year and a half and that I'll continue to to explore, whether that be in meta ads, or TikTok ads, which is becoming extremely popular as it's late, I'm sure you're aware of. Um, I think that, um, you know, part of like this learning journey on my behalf has been like, understanding the maturity of a software. And that's been some learning I've had to go through and thinking that a software was ready when in reality it was not. And that's been a judgment call on the error on my side. And so now going back to some clients that maybe it didn't work for in the beginning and saying, these are almost two completely different tools and having to kind of uh, eat crow a little bit to say, you know, I, I thought this was ready when it wasn't, where now um, I very much feel differently. And um, all of our data and our numbers and our retention and clients um, feedback and surveys are all saying now the tool is ready. So I, I think part of my goal is to um, continue to innovate, not just stop with Google Ads, figure out how that leads into Meta, how that leads into Facebook, Instagram, maybe TikTok and beyond. But in the meantime, make sure that what we have built and what I do consider to be like 95% mature is given to the right clients and that the information is delivered to them in the right way um, before our reporting was even we didn't knock us. We were just looking at ACOS. We weren't looking at BSR and combination of keyword organic rank and tacos and how it all played together. And now it's a much more cohesive story where we can tell a client, this is working or this is not, where before there was sort of some confusion. Like it might have looked like it wasn't working when in reality it was and we didn't have the data to show it and um, vice versa. So learned a lot. Um, external traffic, that's a long winded answer to your question, but external traffic is where I spend uh, my days and um, I'm excited to connect with a lot of the MDS community that maybe have been sitting on the sidelines and uh, looking to jump into this. Um, and, and I'd like to, you know, go over their business with them and, and see if I can help their business. And if not, I'll tell them, but if I can, I'll tell them that too. Nice, man. Yeah, it's great once you, uh, like just that process that you talked about, like, you know, thinking something's done, work, but working through it and uncovering more stuff to do, like, that's just part of, of like doing it right? Like that's just you out there putting in the work. And it's so great to come to a point where you, you can see those KPIs that matter and at like the different times, right? Cause I think one thing I see people do is, is like you mentioned optimizing for clicks or optimizing for conversions. Like someone who doesn't really understand marketing will be like, well, wouldn't you just always optimize for conversions? Like, like that, I want to convert, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> But it's like, no, like there, it, there's stages to it, right? And like yep. maybe maybe you want to open up your funnel to like new traffic and get some new customers. Then yeah, like open it up for clicks, man. Like I want, I need more awareness, you know? Um, so knowing what KPIs to look at at the right time, like that you only learn through experience. And it sounds like you've gotten a lot of that um, in the past year or so looking at all these different businesses um, which is just so valuable. Like it speaks to why, you know, pixel me can be 
such a valuable tool to people is because you're also going to get a little bit of some, you know, strategic advice from from the people that you're talking to. Uh, and I, I think that's critical, man. Uh, so that's good stuff. Thanks for sharing that, Clayton. Of course. Um, Vanessa, I know I saw Tim's presentation in Miami, uh, blew my mind. Um, at one point in time, I was good with like flat files and, um, and, uh, like fighting cases on Amazon. But like, if you're not in that game regularly, you can lose that. Uh, and I did. So that really blew me away just because I could see how much knowledge and experience like went into that. Uh, so why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about like your main role at, at Carbon 6 and, and maybe touch on what's coming up at Inspire. Sure. So I like to think of myself, my, my role right now is community ambassador. And a lot of what Plato was saying, like we are a company that listens to the community to actually make products that work and make products that serve the needs of our clients. My role internally is to be that the in-house Amazon experts to bring the needs, the the pain points, the desires that sellers have, and also the, the view of, of what's happening on Amazon. And to what you were sharing with Clayton before, I think that in our ecosystem, in our industry, our products will never be 100% done. Because, because the industry and because how Amazon works, they are always changing. So if we keep being the same software or the same company for, I don't know, three months, six months, nine months, then we're obsolete. So my work at Carbon 6 has been a lot of bringing that awareness, bringing those changes, raising, you know, the alarms when something needs to be raised of like, hey guys, we are completely obsolete. You need to stop talking about this. We need to stop talking about that. This is how change and, you know, to, because I live in the mind of the seller, I, I work with clients every single day to help them solve their problems. So this year, my goal was, or my work for the, well, two words for the year was operational efficiency. So when I think of uh, 2024 and I think about Carbon 6 and the future of my role in the industry, it's focusing on that. Because if you said at the beginning, you were talking about thinking of Amazon as the that piece of real estate, that business that you buy, that will make you that passive income, whatever. But one, and, and one thing that I realized on operational efficiency is imagine that you buy that land or you buy that business, but you didn't care to check if the plumbing on that house is good. So now you buy a property that is amazing, it's beautiful, and two months down the line, everything breaks apart because the plumbing wasn't like properly done or the electric part was properly done. That's the foundation of your real estate, of, of your house, for example, if you, if you buy one. So to me, that's what I have built in the back end of, of Amazon saying like, I already know all of the plumbing and the electric part and the foundations that you need to build. So, so sellers and entrepreneurs can run and grow it to a point that is massive. So the talk will be at MDS Inspire will be a lot about operational efficiency and understanding what are the things that you need to look for, because it's not only about knowing how to do it, which is amazing if you know how to do flat files, but it's also about understanding that that needs to be done for the business to be solid uh, uh, and have a solid foundation. Um, a lot of it, it's around that also teasing some like great things that we're working on right now. Uh, Carbon Six and the whole um, in the whole ecosystem, uh, we're launching something huge for the community to help them around those things and and leveling their knowledge, understanding, and you know solutions or or operations to a proper standard because that's also something that I that will keep being a trend in the future is how Amazon is changing and how sophisticated and complex the system is getting to the point where like the entrepreneurs that started the business, like back in, I don't know, 2014, probably don't have the same skills that need to have, or you need to have right now to manage the account in the same way. You can always keep growing the business, but if you're not on top of the plumbing and the electric and all of those things that I call the unsexy, right? Because they're super unsexy. Nobody wants to be a plumber. 
Everybody wants to be the real estate agent, right? Like the pretty face next to the board. Everybody um, wants to be the pixel me guy, right? External traffic, yeah, TikTok. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, nobody wants to be the flat file person. The, but fortunately, I like that role and I love building solutions on a lot of content. So that is my focus. The focus with the solution that we're building inside of Carbon 6 and also, yeah, the presentation. So that presentation, if you like the one in Miami, that by the way, I'm doing the mogul call tomorrow for for a group. Um, I'm going to try to make that mogul call tomorrow, but I'll be ready for the presentation at the event if not. And uh, thank you so much for coming on, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Of course. Absolutely. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.